Have you been wanting to upgrade one of the MTG Arena starter decks? I'm going to take you through the process and we're going to make a budget deck right now. Let's go. Welcome to the Attic Mana Dad here. This is the channel where we play what is good in magic, mostly on Arena. Today we're going to make a budget deck using one of the starter decks and I'm going to show you how. And uh, first thing you do, go to decks, twirl up the my decks, go to starter decks, pick your starter deck. We're going to try this charging ahead deck. It has two non-format cards because it's alchemy, but that's okay. We're going to clone that. Okay, find the charging ahead. If you don't have as many decks as me, <laughs> it might be easier. Mine was at the bottom and then I opened it just to make sure. And we're going to go, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set this from alchemy to standard. And we find out that these are not legal in standard. So let's remove those. And, uh, oh yeah, Ogre Battle Driver, sorry. And uh, Tamako Phoenix, interesting. Okay. Well, this gives us a shell. So the first thing I look at when I'm looking at one of these starter decks to upgrade is what are the rares here? So we've got a Rampaging Raptor, 4-4 Trample Haste. We've got Samut, which likes it when um, uh, hasty creatures deal damage. Right, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, if that creature entered the battlefield this turn, draw a card. So that's cool. Miglios can also... Uh, no, it can't get haste. This guy, Furnace Strider, can get haste. But we probably, anything that's a five drop that's not like a really amazing creature, we probably want to get rid of. We got Surak and Gorse Claw, which is going to get of our stuff haste. And uh, it gives our other creatures, or yeah, it's going to give our other creatures haste and trample. Um, so this is Convoke. We don't necessarily want to eliminate that right away. But. I can see already that we don't have much of a bottom end, so we should try and do something with that. So, what is good in Gruul right now? And we have a bunch of tap lands here, one Copper Line Gorge. The first thing you probably want to you'll probably want to invest wild cards in is lands. So, we just have the one Copper Line Gorge. Um, I'm going to try to keep it. So there's three, adding three rares. So we go up to three Copper Line Gorges. Let's try to get down on the Wooded Ridge Lines. And let's see what else we can do here. So we're red, we're green, we're colorless. Fortunately, it shows you like the colors that splash into those. We don't care about so much of those. So we're going to do this Gruel Aggro Shell, which uses cacophony scamp so we'll add four uncommons here definitely know i want the cacophony scamp ancestral anger is nice um, felonious rage could be nice start adding cards like that in uh, frantic scapegoat could be good it can also give things haste for much less mana than these things so we can take those out um, Kumano, it's pretty good in terms of just cheap red stuff. Uh, Monastery Swift Spear is nice. Monstrous Rage, we'd probably take that over the uh, Felonious Rage when we're making cuts here. Um, what else can we do? Blazing Crescendo is pretty good. Um, in terms of rares, let's do one Charming Scoundrel. We've already got a Felden. And Inti is pretty good for these kind of decks. And where's the Prowess guy? It's Fugitive Codebreaker. This is Prowess Haste. Let's get one of those going on. And let's look at what green can offer here. I think we want some giant growths. And oh, we definitely want that goblin 
that's double strike once it gets big picnic ruiner and we want to be able to do um audacity so let's cut the felonious rages down i don't think we need sprouting goblin we don't need colossal growth well you certainly could do it epic confrontation we might want some kind of interaction I think Miglio's, it is a 4-4 four, four for 3 mana. That's kind of cool. We'll keep that. And Keldon Warmonger, we don't need this whole little dragon theme. We'll keep Rampaging Raptor. And the um, question is whether we even need to keep Surak and Gorklaw. Probably not. Uh, the other thing is, you, if you've got a very low-to-the-ground deck, you don't need as many lands. So let's trim down three lands. We'll go down three forests, I think. Okay, now we're at 68 cards. This is looking pretty decent. Um, our main thing... Okay, we can cut the Vaishino Branch Riders also. Are there any other one-drops that are left over from the old deck? Um, Ancestral Anger is Sorcery Speed. Let's just cut those. I do like the card draw. It would be nice, actually, to get another Samut. So let's do a one Samut. One more Samut. And so it's 62 cards. Don't necessarily need Kumano. Could trim down a Kumano, trim down a Frantic Scapegoat. And I'm going to try to rename this Standard. I'd put like a S for all my standard decks. Charging ahead, upgraded. And how many rares do we have now? So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are mythic rares. And ten, right? Oh, eight. Uh, okay, so we should remove one of these guys that I added. Possibly and yeah, we'll remove the extra summit. <laughs> and then when we need to add back in something, what? Frantic scapegoat? Kumano? Maybe get some just some direct damage into here. So let's see. And damage, go to red. You can also go and search here, and you can do the sets. And key thing here, you can do rare, so you can browse the rares that you have in red and green already and see if there's stuff that kind of fits into the plan that you're making or, or whatever deck you're making. And um, what I'm looking for is... Play with fire. Because those can go face or those can take out a small creature. Um, when you're playing lower on the ladder, usually there's a lot of aggro decks and things. And the festivities is actually not a bad idea to have for sideboard. We'll throw some of those into the sideboard. And um, the other thing to consider... Of course, Brotherhood's End, depending on the deck. I won't put that in, because that's a rare. And um, what I'm thinking of is the five-mana thing that gets cheaper depending on... Or four-mana thing that gets cheaper depending on how many creatures you have attacked. Witch Doctor Frenzy. These are good to have to deal with. Shieldreds or things. Throw some of those in the sideboard. Those could end up main deck if you find that those are good in the current meta in terms of what other people are playing. And what the threats are that are beating you. So let's go ahead and give this deck a spin and see how it does on the ladder. Playing our budget hasty gruel that we just put together. Up against mtgtopdecks.me. Somebody promoting their website. Just because I read it out loud, I, I've never been to that one. Don't think that's me promoting it. Interesting hand. We got Inti. If Inti dies, we're kind of in trouble, but 
We'll give it a shot. Back to play with fire. Top deck plays a tap land. A turn. Okay, we get a swift spear, but we'll try the inti. This guy's hasty anyway. The inti draws the removal. Oh, it's a Malia deck. Okay. Interesting. Well, Ward pay three life. We don't want Amalia to grow. But we do want Monastery Swift Spear to grow. So. Let's take out that Amalia. Yes. And, uh, we've got a green left over, so let's power up the Swift Spear. We can discard a card. Yeah, why not? A plus one counter. Put it on NT. What is that 10 on turn three? Lunar veteran. Amalia number two, let me guess. So now they're gonna remove that NT. Picnic Rune. Get in. I think we'll just do the one damage to save this monster's rage for popping on the picnic ruiner potentially next turn for a big double strike. They got Amalia again. That's good. So we only have to worry about cut down probably. We're going to do a tap land, gain life. We'll throw Amalia further. What do we get? Ooh, Audacity is even better. So now we've got a pretty strong attack here. The opponent blocks the Swift Spear and not the Picnic Ruiner. Oh, okay, well, let me double strike you. Good game. <laughs> but you did get my Swift Spear. There you go. All right. Beating the uh, website owners with our budget rule. If you want, you can play this against Sparky. You can do the bot match. You can do it in the play queue, where people are playing a little more janky decks a lot of time, although a lot of time people are playing um, meta decks in the play queue, I found, which is weird, but you do you. If you, <laughs> if you don't want to try to face against the usual other metal deck, meta decks, um, I guess it's an easier, easier way to get your wins in. So we can keep this. We're going to go first. We can get a hasty creature going, or we can just get the tap land. We have two creatures next turn. Um... And we're going to go with the Cacophony Scam this turn. I should have done the Frantic Scapegoat, actually. Up against something in Japanese I can't read. Spyglass Siren. Uh, we could play with Fire That, but it doesn't seem to be that worth it. Let's get in with the Cacophony Scam. They're willing to trade. Buy another scam. Holding back our haste now. Okay. Kumano faces Kazakhan. Get in. We will decline to blow up Kakafa in this camp. Because each time it hits, you can sacrifice it to proliferate. I can actually flip that thing, but uh, I don't want to do that. They're going to take a play the Kite Sail Larcenist. They target the Scamp. Okay. Not that big of a deal here. We've got a Copper Line Gorge. Let's get Monastery Swift Spear going. They can't block the Scapegoat. 
Um, I think we'll decline to, to switch the suspect over to the Swift Spear. And depending on how they block here, we could Giant Growth or we could save it. Um, I guess we'll Giant Growth. Why not? It did some serious damage. And uh, yeah, let's make sure we're drawing something like that's not a lance. Drawing some action. One is down to six. We have a lot of cards in hand, but if they are slow, we might be able to out aggro them here. And we will suspect the Kumano, because that's be more damage getting through. Um, I'm going to attempt to distribute counters here. Probably have a counter spell. Oh, they don't. Okay. And we'll attack. Uh, opponent. I do not have time for this. I do not have time for you. They have one piece of removal, and they have two possible blockers here. They're going to be forced to lose at least one of them. So which would we rather use? The, lose the Kite Cell Larcenist or the Fairy Mastermind? I guess we'll take out the Larcenist. We have a Deep Cavern Bat, but we have nothing in our hand. <laughs> Picnic Ruiner is on an adventure here. We're going to use a map token on the Mastermind to hit a land. Okay, here we go. Um, we don't have any suspect... Uh, But Swift Spear successfully trades with any of these guys, and if they want to double block on the scapegoat, they'll take one. Oh, they have a cut down. Okay. They leave us with the 3 3 scapegoat. They're for life, however. Invasion of Amonkhet. A mill three with nothing to discard because we dumped our hand so quickly. And another bat. Again, nothing they can take with us with the bat. Fugitive Codebreaker. Um, I feel like we want to disguise that. Well, it probably takes this, goes to one. Oh. Should definitely have held that back till after the attack, because then they're really forced to make that block because they don't know if we have direct damage. We've already shown that we have play with fire in our deck. Okay, they're gonna do a relentless reef and flip the invasion of Almond Cat. To bring it in, probably bring in one of these lifelinks. The 4 4 flying lifelink. This should be very cheap to flip, though, because we should have a fair amount of instants and sorceries in the graveyard. Oh, okay, they do kite sail larcenist. Interesting. 
How much is it to turn face up? Still four to turn face up? We really only have two instants and sorceries in the graveyard, huh? Alright. And giant growth. Which, because of prowess, will make that five power, so I guess we're attacking. And then five toughness. This is quite a battle. But our little budget deck is staying in it. Opponent almost has more... <laughs> I mean, surely within their deck, they have more rares in their mana base. Than we have in our entire deck. Drop another land. That's good for us. Subterranean Schooner, which they can't do much with. Alright, so... Doesn't give haste. We could try and make the Codebreaker a lethal threat. What's their last card is the question. They have this Risen Reef they can activate. Maybe we do just go with the... Make that lethal. Hopefully not a removal spell. Okay, yes. They're going to block with the 4-4. Four four. And then a monster's rage gets us what? Is that enough to trample over for the win here? It is! <laughs> Our guy dies, but it doesn't matter. Because we won. Woohoo! Up against Memorex. It's not live. Memorex. Uh, tap land. Blood Tithe Harvest Gear. Let's get that off the board. This looks like it's the vampire's deck. Get all hasty. Getting hasty with it. Nah, 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 nah. Another blood type. Um... We're very much stuck on land. Inti would be nice. I don't... I'm not confident that they're gonna... allow... Inti to live. Pause there, but I guess it could be pausing just because of the blood. Might be a cut down. Well, pretty prepared for the aggro here. Opponent. I do not have time for this. I do not have time for you. I'll attack. Smack it in. And get the corpse guy. No, ill timed explosion, okay. Let's draw off the audacity. We get a cacophony scamp. Huh. Well, I guess we'll get the picnic ruiner down. They could easily have more removal, but 
worth a shot. Grixis. Grixis in the mixus. Once again, the mana base is seriously, you know, intimidating compared to our deck's mana base. Okay. Yes, opponent came ready to wipe the board. This looks fun, actually. We have to record a version of that. Uh, let's keep playing two drops. Until such time as we can play Amiglias. We get back a push pull. They're trying to reanimate their main ripper, it looks like. Okay, one more mana, they're going to be able to do it. Let's get in with Inti. Make this card a Rampaging Raptor. Hopefully hit a land here. Yes, we do. Oh, okay, they're gonna block, weird, but get some extra damage in. If we can. I suppose we could have played Miglias if we didn't do that. I was thinking Kumano. Hold up the other giant growth. Pick lock. Let's hope they miss their land drop. No lands, no lands, no lands. Push. Did they do miss the lead down, so. Well, we can Cactus Camp. Pick lock again. Play to the blocker. That's a good sign for us. One of these give trample. This can give menace, though. Let's give it menace. Menace. If they don't block the cacophony scamp, we're in like Flynn here. They did. Okay. Um, so, how about plus three, plus three? And also give plus two, plus two. Boom, boom, boom! Budget boom! <laughs> All right, let's check out the stats. Okay, here's the proof in the pudding. Three and, oh, 20 minutes. Three games, no hanky-panky. The three games you saw, the three games I played. This deck had 100% win rate in platinum. Up in platinum here, platinum rank. So, um, yeah. <laughs> That's uh, better than I, even I expected. <laughs> um, so I hope you enjoyed this. Hope that this helps you craft something good. If you like budget decks, I try to do regularly once every one or two weeks have a good standard budget deck or a budget deck in another format um for the fun that's fun to play on arena um and so uh if you do like that hit that subscribe and join us here at the man dad channel thanks for watching and let me remind you that magic is a game so fun
even dads can enjoy it. Adios. And oh, uh, you can also check out. I got some other budget decks. I'm gonna link over there if you if you like this sort of thing. Just to prove, what else is around?